Welcome to another short thought from the uh, team from GAFCON Isle of Wight uh, as we just think and reflect on Advent. Now here's a verse uh, that is often read at carol services and is so apt for Advent as it looks at Jesus being the light. Here's the verse, John 1 verse 5. The light shines in, in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Is that an interesting phrase? The darkness has not overcome it. It is a familiar verse. It's read at nearly every carol service up and down the land. But I wonder whether we've really stopped and paused and thought about it so that we can uh, really grasp what the Lord is teaching us through it. We live in such uncertain times, don't we? These last 20 months have been really, really hard for us. But I picked up the paper the other day and just almost every page, on the front page certainly, I just noticed dark stories, one after the other. Here they are. It was the time when with that uh, uh, horrible uh, death of so many of the migrants trying to get over the English Channel to, get, to find safety here, Many, many people died. Even a pregnant mother was found among the dead. Another headline was from Benedict Cumberbatch. It was a smaller one on the front page, but it was there. He said, men need fixing. There's a problem. There's darkness. And then there was uh, the parents' agony. There was the parents speaking out about their severely autistic child who had been kept in a secure unit for 20 years. It felt so wrong. It expressed a darkness in this world that we need to fix, we need to put right. What about in our own lives? We can't put our lives onto the front page of the paper, but when we look on our, into our own hearts, what do we see? We often see unfinished business, missed friends, regrets, remorse. There's a deep sense that all is not well. There's a darkness described in our own lives as well. We keep it hidden so often, don't we, so much of the time, but it's there and we want, and it is true. If there is light in the world, then it's flickering and faltering. So this verse actually is a very bold claim, isn't it? The light shines in the darkness. Well, it doesn't feel as though there's much light shining at this time, does there? Can the darkness ever be dispelled? So much of Christmas is about a celebration of light. The displays, the lights, the decorations, the lights around rooms, thousands of lights everywhere. Why have 3,000 when actually two will do? No, light is everywhere. And that's quite right. Because light points us uh, to Jesus. You see, in our verse, the light here is Jesus himself. It's all about Jesus. I don't know where, uh, whether you have ever thought about it, but when it comes to light and darkness, quite simply, forget about the spiritual dimension for the moment, quite simply, when you look at light and darkness, light always wins. You can be plunged into darkness, complete darkness, but the moment you strike a match, there's light. You turn, switch the, uh, a, a, a torch on and the shaft of light begins to light up all around you. You can't actually have a torch dark. You can't have a beam of darkness in the light. And at Christmas, you see, Jesus, the light, came into the world. It means we don't have to be in the dark about life anymore. All those things that we feel are inherently wrong, as I showed you from the paper. All those things that we feel are darkness, Jesus can shed light on. And that means it is defeated. 
Isn't that terrific news? The two, you see, can't exist. You can't have light and darkness. They can't coexist. The most wonderful news of all, the most wonderful thing of all, this is the Christmas story. This is the Christian story. Jesus overcomes darkness. Jesus wins, we are told. There is a day, of course, that, we, that the whole world went dark when Jesus died. All the darkness, all those awful things in the world and in our lives were placed on him. But of course, the, Christ, the Christian story is that on the third day, Jesus rose. Darkness has not overcome Jesus. Jesus wins, we are told. The darkness could not overcome Jesus. It might have seen that just for a moment on Good Friday, darkness won. The first Black Friday, if you, if you will, when darkness fell. But it could not overcome Jesus. Darkness could not win. Jesus does. He's the winner. Uh, a couple of verses uh, further on in, John, in John's Gospel, John chapter 1, verse 9, we read this. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. We've seen what this light does, and now we're told that Jesus is that light, and he comes. That is the Christmas story. Jesus comes. Now, if you're what in watching this you'll either be someone who knows this to be true I would encourage you in this Advent season to rejoice in this that light has come into your hearts Rejo reflect on it rejoice on it over these coming days if you're watching this and you just happen to stumble across it and you haven't ever really thought about it before do consider it further look at the logic of light and darkness. Then think that whoever this Jesus is, he is described as the one who is light and he's come to dispel the darkness, to win over it. You too can receive that light. You can receive Jesus. Can I encourage you to make your way to a church, a Gafcon church on the island? Or at least to a church where you will hear this explained well. Or contact us through our website. Let me pray. Gracious God, thank you so, so much for this wonderful season where we can remind ourselves of you sending Jesus into the world. Love coming down to us. Thank you that you come to our mess. Come, thank you that you come to our darkness. And you bring light to dispel the darkness, to defeat the darkness, and to win. Help us to think on these things and rejoice in them. Amen. Amen.